All right, well, hey there, folks. I'm meteorologist Matt Barrington. Hope you're having yourself a good day out there for your Thursday. We're trying to keep you apprised of the latest here with Raphael. It's kind of weird, you know. Here we are just sitting around, and it's, you know, kind of just cloudy and, and mild outside. But basically directly to our south is a fairly well-developed hurricane here in Raphael. I got the 3D imagery up here, and you're going to see it is a uh, stout-looking storm uh, that we are going to be seeing out there uh in the coming days and it's going to be but it's going to be weakening so that's the good news here let me get the right one up there we go i had the wrong graphic up there's a 3d imagery here of Raphael. and you can see it's a uh, still very well organized it is a healthy looking storm it has a central eye there you can see in the 3d imagery um, it has winds of 100 miles per hour so it's a solid category two storm and like i said i mean this thing it's not that far away from us. I mean, it's just due south. In fact, I'll get you a, a measurement here. It's 400 miles away. I mean, that's really not that far when you think about it. But the thing is, it is not moving towards us. It's moving to the west-northwest at 9 miles an hour. It's going to be taking more of a westward bend here in the coming days. And then it kind of works its way over to the south, uh, west, southwest area of the Gulf near the Bay of Campeche and possibly stalls out possibly just falls apart um the models are doing a lot of different things with this <laughs> just put it that way uh, this one continues to be difficult in the long range and the reason why is because it starts to fall apart and once it starts to fall apart because it runs into some issues it just doesn't hang on very well and then once it's kind of getting torn to pieces it gets really hard for the models to say hey this is exactly where it's going when it's falling apart and it doesn't have as much of a defined, you know, circulation anymore. So this is the GFS model, noon on Sunday. You can see it has the circulation just south of uh, Louisiana. So this is the one that brings it closest to us. And I'm going to get you a full screen so you can see it better. You don't have to look at my mug the whole time. And noon on Monday, once again, south of Louisiana. So just kind of floating around out there, getting torn apart. And noon on Tuesday, really at this point, is getting absorbed into a cool front you know could bring us a few showers according to this at least by this model but all in all not going to be a big deal for us now let me show you the other main model the, the european and we'll stop it at noon on saturday and then we'll stop it at noon on sunday just kind of trekking westward actually between noon on saturday and noon on sunday it really doesn't move it's just stationary and then by noon on monday it's diving to the south and continues diving towards uh, Mexico, then eventually it's probably going to make some sort of a landfall as a weak disintegrating system in Mexico. So obviously wildly different scenarios with these two models, but regardless, we're looking at a system weakening and falling apart, so it doesn't really matter so much which of these scenarios that plays out. I mean, look at this, the forecast models. They just don't have a grip of what happens. And that's not because the models stink or the models are no good or they don't have any idea of what's happening or whatnot. What's happening here is you have a system dying, decaying, falling apart. If this was staying a strong storm, the models would have a much better uh, grip on what it was doing. But when it's falling apart, just kind of getting shredded to pieces by upper level wind shear, the models don't have really a good idea, you know, where where it's going to go because it's just it's hardly even exists. It's hardly it's it's not existing anymore. At some point, <laughs> it dies out. It falls completely apart. It dissipates. So that's why these things are all over the place. So it's it's still there's still question marks, but the good news here is that we're not looking at major impacts. In fact, I wish we were going to get some rain out of this, but it doesn't look like we're going to get much. It looks like about a half inch or less across the area, and that's at, at best. So we're just talking about a few light showers here and there. We still have the high surf out there, the rip current, so we got to watch out for that. Um, so we got to keep folks out of the water. But beyond that, there are no other real worries here for us with Raphael. Um, once again, there's a lot of complexities in this forecast, but the threats are low. Um, I mean, the complexities come because it's falling apart, not because you know, of anything else. It's falling apart, so that's what gives us the complexities. Um, our impacts, once again, that dangerous surf and several days possibly of some light spotty showers here and there. Once again, probably not adding up to more than a half inch of rain. 
So not a big deal at all here for us with that. So that's a good in-depth look here at Raphael. There's actually another system out there uh, just off to uh, near the Virgin Islands of Puerto Rico. We're going to be keeping an eye on the coming days as well. But right now, looking at the long-range models, I don't see this one doing anything. It's probably going to get ripped apart too by upper-level wind shear. So not going to be a big deal there. Uh, we're doing just fine. We have clouds out there today. Just a quick look at your forecast for today. It doesn't look bad at all. Uh, I know we have some football games tonight. Let's go ahead and get into that because uh, we have playoff high school football going on across the area today. Um, so here is the teams that are playing. And I think all the games started around 7 uh, this evening. And so we had the playoff games with uh, Handley coming in to take out on St. Michael. Uh, and then also Vestavia Hills coming in to take on MGM. And then we also have Chelsea at Saraland. And then Hale County coming in to take on Bayside Academy there on the Eastern Shore. All these games talking cloudy conditions, temperatures in the 70s. Could there be a sprinkle out there? Sure. But it won't be very heavy. If you want to grab a raincoat just to be safe or a small umbrella, probably wouldn't be a bad idea. But the chances of you needing it aren't, aren't extremely high. Uh, tomorrow should be pretty good, but we'll, uh, once again, a few showers are going to be possible. It's going to be basically the same as today. Mostly cloudy skies, low 80s for highs, 70s in the morning, so it stays very muggy and warm in the morning. Um, and then low 80s in the afternoon. Once again, a few isolated spotty showers are possible, but there will not be widespread rain out there for your Friday. As we look into the upcoming weekend, same kind of deal here. Some spotty showers are possible, mostly cloudy skies but really not a whole lot going on. So once again, Raphael having very limited impacts on our area. The main thing we got to watch out for is the rip current risk. It's high for your Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Let's keep folks out of the water and we will be doing just fine. Here is that long range forecast. Um, once again, we're talking about, you know, spotty showers over the weekend. That's probably about all we get. We could bump up those rains chances Monday and Tuesday, depending on exactly what happens with Raphael? We could end up with a few showers there, but once again, wouldn't be anything really all that significant, just some spotty light showers. And uh, we may eventually see a cool down by the end of next week, but that's, uh, you know, still seven days away. So we're going to be dealing with these warm and sort of muggy temperatures here for the next six, seven days. We'll have a lot more coming up on Fox and News 3, 4, and 5 today.